Hi, welcome. Today we're going to talk about early recognition and management of sepsis in um, our extended care facilities and what's the role of the nursing assistant, the CNA. We're going to talk about why sepsis is important and what it is and how to recognize it. My mother, a 20-year breast cancer survivor, she dies of a disease that we never even, never even heard of. Septic shock, sepsis, and she was like, how do you spell it? I said, I don't know. Really, does it affect that many people? Then why haven't I heard of it? My mother, Mama, she had plans of being a gospel singer. One glorious happy day. They found a clot in her femoral artery. She got through that surgery, but she started complaining of a lot of weakness, couldn't catch her breath. When I heard the word sepsis, I didn't understand it. I remember that I went to bed, woke up to find the EMTs in my room. My doctor friend called the hospital and said, look, unless somebody is coding, there's no one in there as sick as this man is right now. Get a doctor in there. In the next few hours, I had one shut down after another, all of my organs, lungs, kidneys, eventually a heart attack. My toes were blackened and gangrenous. It was very unclear as to whether I would survive. It was Halloween. He was up crying, crying. I took his temperature, 102.3, and his color was gray. His lips, his everything was gray, and he was not responding. We got to the hospital. Um, he got swelled up, so he was huge. And one of the doctors said, we don't know if you'll be able to take him home. I'd been waiting for him for, for all these months, and I've only had him three weeks. He, he's mine. I wish I would have asked more, but I felt like I was supposed to know as a mother. I didn't understand that any infection could result in a toxic response that is known as sepsis. It started when I went to the dentist and had some dental work. Following that, I developed an infection and then septic shock. I can't even describe to you the horror of seeing her die of sepsis. The body swelling up twice its size, fingers turning black, having to be intubated. It looked like someone took a shotgun and shot her in the leg. That's what it looked like. For me, this could have a very different ending and it's why I share my survivor story. And the nurse, her name was Annie, and she says, are you ready to hold him? And I said, oh my God, yes. She put him in my arms. And she says, he's gonna be okay. I thought maybe if I share my story, you know, somebody will learn from it. Mama's gone, but maybe somebody else can be saved. In the video that you watched, you heard counts of three patients or family members talking about um, sepsis and what it is and what it means and the overall outcomes for their family members. It's important to understand that early recognition of sepsis and then early intervention to treat it 
is what can save a life. And you play a significant role in that early recognition. Worldwide, sepsis is one of the major causes of morbidity and mortality. It's overall the 10th leading cause of death in the U.S. More than 750,000 patients annually get severe sepsis. 500 patients die a day in the United States from severe sepsis. That's like two planes crashing every day, no survivors. Our elderly are significantly impacted by sepsis. Age itself is an independent risk factor for death. So the higher, the older you are, and you, the more likely you are to die from sepsis, and the more likely you are to get sepsis from an infection. You're more likely to end up in an ICU. And if you are over 85, that risk is even higher. And you're going to end up spending a lot of time in the hospital and then probably coming to an extended care facility for continued rehab and healing. Also, our elderly, as a result of sepsis, um, can have some permanent or longer-term changes to their cognitive status as well as their ability to function, perform ADLs, etc. Sepsis is one of the leading reasons that patients from skilled nursing facilities or extended care facilities get readmitted to hospitals. So our statistics in Michigan in 2014, you can see here 47 Almost 48% of the readmissions were related to infection or sepsis. Sepsis is a time-sensitive disease, just like heart attack, stroke, and trauma. In heart attack patients, there's lots of public awareness about if you have chest pressure, chest heaviness, get to your ER. And in the ER, when they get there, there are standard protocols that are followed by the hospital and that has resulted in significant lives saved. The same with stroke. I, you travel down any highway and you'll see bull, bulletin boards or billboards with signs of act fast, with, recognize these signs of stroke. We have trauma centers throughout the state of Michigan and throughout the country where specialized personnel are trained to provide standardized assessment and treatment um, of this population that's resulted in a significant improvement in, in lives saved. Sepsis also is a time-sensitive disease, and it needs to be treated um, as urgently as we do heart attack, stroke, and trauma. Sepsis is harder to recognize than heart attack, stroke, or trauma. I'm not going to go into detail here, but sepsis sits on the continuum. You heard in that video that the one gentleman that had sepsis said, I didn't know that any infection could lead to sepsis, and that's what this slide depicts. Any infection can progress into sepsis, severe sepsis, and septic shock. And that's why it's important for you to know that so that you can be on the watch for those signs of progression. We've known since 1904 um, that except on a few occasions, the patient appears to die from the body's response to the infection rather than from the infection. And so it's that body's over-response to the infection that causes um, the different organ systems to fail. So we need to recognize it early. And so a key part of what you do and what's already part of your early recognition program is the stop and watch. So early detection of sepsis is a key for sepsis survival. So what can you do? You can let your nurse know if your resident triggers any of the stop and watch criteria because then they are going to look deeply um, and evaluate this patient to see if they have sepsis, severe sepsis or moving down um, that sepsis continuum, and then intervene appropriately. So you play a major role in early identification of the patient in, um, with sepsis. Please 
take the time to um, understand and look for those signs and symptoms and let your nurse know when um, you see any changes in your patient using the stop and watch protocol.